I'd like you to use your imagination for a minute and look at these two columns here. The one on the left would ostensibly be some vertically integrated smoke and it's sitting on top of Mount Everest here. And so Mount Everest is in the clear and there's a layer of clear air underneath it. Now use your imagination and take this column over to the right hand side move it off Mount Everest so it's not sitting on it anymore and it comes right down to the ground perhaps where you're going to be fishing and now this is your column of smoke and now we have vertically integrated smoke but because it's sitting on the ground it is also surface smoke. Now I can give you a visual example of how that pans out this is four days ago when we went fishing and you can see here what a lack of vertically integrated and surface smoke results in. Then two days later we go fishing at Shadow Lake. The winds have changed and the vertically integrated smoke moves in and touches the surface and this is what you end up seeing you have vertically integrated smoke that is down at the surface. Thanks to NASA Worldview and the Aqua satellite, we can get a really good overview of the smoke dispersal that was affecting us when we were fishing. And what you'll see here over on the west side, the red dots are all fire activity and you can see here where my cursor is a very significant plume of smoke which would be representative of uh, the vertical column of smoke that's radiating up and out also at round Kelowna here now in fact you can just make out a cumulus cloud that this smoke is creating above it there and that's the uh, indicative of the amount of uh, energy that is there in those fires. You can also just see some here in the Kelowna fire and down there as well. Now what we're going to do is take a look at how things like uh, stagnant conditions, topography, cold air drainage and most particularly uh, inversions can get that smoke settling in all through these valleys and to get a better look at that I'm going to hide the uh, layer of the aqua and go over to the Terra model and now you can see here much better all that smoke that is settled into those valleys. So now if you wanted to see where this smoke was going to be going for the next 48 hours you may wish to turn to a model such as this in order to get an overview of what's going on there. And for that, we're going to look at another model that uh, models not only the vertically integrated smoke, but also the surface smoke. Now, in order to get to this loop and visualize it, we're going to turn to the high resolution rapid refresh model. And this was developed by the National Centers for Environmental Protection which uh, shows up here as NCEP and they exist within the National Weather Service. It's a numerical weather prediction model that's designed to provide short-term and high-resolution forecasts for the United States but it does extend up into our area here in Canada. It's basically derived from a complex process that involves a bunch of data that's assimilated and numerical integration and it uses um, some pretty advanced atmospheric science techniques. So it's not completely intuitive though to get to that uh, graphic loop that we just saw here previously. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do that to save you a bit of time in terms of throwing yourself against a wall in a dark room as it were. So the first thing you want to do is go over here if you can see my cursor and the model that we're picking is the uh, HRRR NCEP smoke operational model. 
uh, domain will leave us full but here under the date where that becomes uh, more influential on what we're doing here is go look at the table underneath and you could see that from Saturday it's not populated uh, column number 11 through to the other end there that we can see for example 30 are all blank and if we want to get a longer play on our model we're going to go th and just populate it out and you can do that by by um, trial and error for example I'm just going to go down here to when August the 18th started at 00 Zulu and once we've done that now you can see that my table is completely populated now if I want to see the vertically integrated smoke I go here under loop and just click on the check mark that's for vertically integrated smoke you wait for a while and then it's processing all that data while you wait and then you end up with this loop that's showing the dispersion of the smoke throughout the continental USA and up into the lower southern parts of the provinces in Canada. You can also then use your browser uh, zoom controls in order to expand this model. Of course if I wanted to look at my near surface smoke then we would just go again under the loop column and uh, click on the near surface smoke. Once again we wait for it to load and uh, eventually here we are going to be seeing this looping model that is focusing on the near surface smoke. If you'd like more information on that HRRR smoke modeling system refer to the uh, URL that's up here and uh, you can go read more about that and also if you are interested in that EOSDIS worldview that uh, we brought up earlier uh, I will probably be delving more into that in the next video with respect to um, working your way through the maze of uh, different options in terms of the layers you can use and why you would use some of those layers over others in a little bit more depth and detail.